Hello, and welcome to this mini-lecture on secondary data. I'm your host, Chris Curran, and in part one of the series, we'll be talking about different levels of data. So let's jump right in and begin discussing levels of data. When we think about data, data can come at many different levels. So at the bottom of the screen, we have a, a studious student working hard in the classroom. And we may have data on that student. In other words, we could have a test score from the reading or mathematics test that that student takes. We could have data on the number of times that a student is absent in school or other characteristics of the student's experience. We could imagine that data, however, also being aggregated up a level. So instead of looking at the data at the level of the student, we could think of that data at the level of the teacher, the classroom, right? So an aggregate group of students. Likewise, we could take that data up to the level of the school. And we could take data from the school up to the level of the school district. And from there, we could take data all the way up to the level of the state or even to the level of the United States at a national level estimate. So in other words, data can come at different levels. Again, at the bottom, we have data from the school, the student level, all the way up to data at the state level. And we could even go beyond what's shown on the screen and think about national or international level estimates of student achievement. Now, when we think about this type of data, we can imagine, again, some examples. So if we're talking about student level data, we might be looking at an individual test score. If we're talking about classroom level data, we might be thinking about the average score of students in a class. So this would be an, a single estimate of the test score average of a classroom that would be an aggregate or mean of all of the individual students in that class. Likewise, we could average average scores of classrooms up to the average score of a school. We could average scores further up to be the average score in a district. And we could go as far as averaging scores up to the state or again, even the national level. So again, we're just introducing the idea that there's different levels to the data. Let's add some terminology to this. When we talk about data at the most basic level, in this case, in our previous example, the level of the student, we refer to this as micro data. And so micro data is just a term that means data at the most basic unit of observation. So if we were talking about, say, a medical example, micro data might be at the level of the patient. In the case of schools, you might think of data at the level of the student and so forth. When we move from micro data up to, say, the classroom level, the school level, the district level, we're talking about aggregate data. So this is data that's aggregated at a higher level. So again, an example of this might be the average test score at a school. Now, in some cases, we will use data that mixes different levels. And this was what we refer to as multi-level data. It's just data from multiple levels. So for instance, we might have a study in which we use individual student test scores, but we also use data from the school level, such as the number of teachers in a school. And then with a multi-level framework, we can think about the different relationships and the ways in which data at the most base level, the micro data, interacts or operates or is related to data at higher levels of aggregation. And this would make it a multi-level study. So these are a few terms that can be useful as we think about categorizing types of data. Again, we've just seen briefly here that data can come at different levels from down to the most basic unit of observation up to more aggregate levels. So these will be some terms that will apply as we continue to think our way through different types of secondary data. Now, as we move forward in the next part of the series, we'll have a short lecture on the temporal aspects of data. So we'll think about aspects of data as it relates to time and how data is collected, organized, and thought of over time. So I appreciate your attention on this mini lecture and I look forward to you joining us in part two of this series on secondary data.